Hello everyone, my name is Matthew Fraley, founder of BreakpointTrades.com. Founded it way back in 2003, over 20 years ago, to provide advanced technical analysis, market commentary, trade ideas, and advanced mechanical trading algorithms, such as our 21 SPY and ES mean reversion systems, and of course our awesome KISS systems. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started with this recording. It is March 6th. As you know, the markets had sort of a shot across the bow yesterday. Anyway, this is our back-end recorder for our website subscribers, and I'm going to go ahead and get that recording started now. Hello, everyone. This is Matthew Fraley with BreakpointTrades.com. This is the Wednesday, March 6th newsletter. Tonight's newsletter, as you can see, divided into seven major sections. Before we get into that, as you know, Steve Nelson let you guys know last night, my found out my father passed away, so I've been dealing with that. Um, not exactly 100% sure what happened. We think he passed on Sunday evening. I, the way it looks, we think he fell, maybe hit his head really bad, badly. And um, my guess is that maybe he had some internal bleeding. He was laying on the floor. Um, pretty sad situation. Uh, basically, I usually talk to him about every day or every other day. And one of the neighbors, he lives in an apartment complex, did a wellness check on him and um, they found him. And, you know, so anyway, we've been dealing with that. I was gone most of the day today. I was at the funeral home. Again, I appreciate all the well wishes and condolences from all of you. Um, really appreciate that. Again, we all go through this eventually. Some of you older than me have probably already been through this with your parents. Some of you are older or younger, you know, your parents are still alive, but you know, again, it's, it's life. It's what we go through. It sucks. Um, by the way, my mom's still alive and she's doing well, but anyway, anyway, back to the newsletter here. So again, as far as the markets, as you know, Tuesday, the markets had a shot across the bow, as you know, after five waves up, that's to be expected. So we had a big sell off on Tuesday. Pretty scary. Now today the market rebounded quite a bit with the major indexes gaining anywhere from a half to 0.6 to 0.75% for the S&P 500 Qs and IWM respectively. That said, the indexes, major indexes are still down for the week with the S&P off about a 0.6%. The NASDAQ big tech area down 1.5% and the Dow down about 1.1%. Now the Russell holding up the best, it's down 0.3%. Again, despite yesterday's strong sell-off, the S&P is still holding its uptrend line and its 20-day moving average, same for the Qs. You know, we have the short-term moving averages all have strong upward slopes. You know, the uptrend has not yet been broken. We haven't broken any symmetries, okay? So the markets could still go to a new high, in fact, uh, I could see that on the queues, perhaps. That said, it's a bit tricky here. I'm not going to lie. You know, even if the markets do go to a new high, I don't see them running away from here. There's not a lot of blood left in the turnip, I think is the same. So I think the upside's fairly limited, even if we do get new highs. Um, so the other thing we could see, if we do have some sort of high in place at the moment, we could see a lower high formed and then another sell-off. Yet another option for you would be to just follow the KISS systems. Remember, they're long only. They've been catching this entire uptrend, and they have stops in place, and they're raised over time. And, you know, you could just simply stay in them until those systems get out. They could get out fairly soon if the market's put in some sort of top, or if the market wants to go to another high, you know, they'll stay in. So you have to make that decision, but... You know, obviously it's a bit tricky here now. Markets come a long way since the October bottom, all right? And the one area that's really holding up right now is the semiconductors, okay? NVIDIA, stuff like that. And what's been really weakening, Apple, uh, Google, Tesla, even Microsoft looks a little bit toppy. So the markets still hold up fairly well despite that, but we'll see. Some other name, you know, crypto has been on fire. Yesterday had a big sell-off, but then it rebounded a lot today with some of the 
the Bitcoin itself, some of the ETFs, some of the stocks, right back to the highs. Not all of them. Mara, some of those are still quite weak. MSTR isn't back to the highs. Essentially, a lot of the crypto markets bounced off their nine EMAs yesterday. That's always your short-term support. Okay, The systems have been long, these crypto names have been killing it. Okay, Precious metals have been awesome. Late last week, I discussed a bullish setup in gold and the gold mining stocks. They started breaking out late last week and they have continued this week. Right, So congrats to any of you who caught those. You could have played you know, gold itself. You could have played the ETFs, the miners such as GDX, Nugget, GDXU, or some of the individual stocks that I put out. Okay. That said, this area is getting a bit stretched, getting a bit tired. So we could see a pullback at any time. We'll see the nature and extent of that pullback. That said, I do favor a pullback as a buying opportunity, especially if I see like a three wave ABC pullback. Okay. And let's go ahead and move on. So first off, just to give you a quick update on the STS tables here. I know some of you get tired of me talking about these all the time, but we are getting closer guys. So if you look here, you notice the premium tab. Now that doesn't show up for you yet. It just shows up for admin folks like myself and Steve James, but we've already added some things. So this is the premium and um, actually that's on the next slide. But anyway, we'll discuss that in a minute, but even you know with today's move, you can see here, New smart trailing stops in some of these. For example, AMD had a new smart trailing stop, the seventh one that trades up almost 33% from its January 16th entry. Pretty damn good for a month trade. Coinbase up 67.8%, new smart trailing stop. And that moves up to 182.80. Previous one was 177. And Nvidia, we all know Nvidia moved up slightly to 777. That trades up 78%. Again, awesome air, awesome resource. If you haven't used it, you should do so. Remember, we also added the weekly versions, which is essentially weekly versions of all these dailies. Okay. And we have the FAQ. If you haven't read that, remember to set your favorites. Go to the set your favorites from the stars, go to the favorites tab, and make sure to click that receive email alerts. This next slide, image number three. So on this premium section, so here's what we got in here right now. You can see we've populated some of the high performance KISS. And notice the difference here. See the minutes? Instead of them being daily and weekly, notice GDX, we have a 78 minute system. So it's the KISS system, but on a 78 minute time frame. Um, SPY 78 minute, we have multiple of some of these. On the SPY, we have a 78 minute and 195 half day. SSO, we have a 30 minute, 78 minute. UPRO, ERX, uh, GBTC, 39 minute. You can see that's up 167% that trade. The UPRO trades up 72.4%. These are the KISS high performance. So again, we have a lot of this done. We still have a little bit more to go to show the stats and some of the charts. Once we have that complete, then we'll go ahead and make it live. And you'll be able to start following these high performance versions. Okay. But just letting you know we're getting closer. Next, uh, just looking at a couple examples of the KISS systems, especially for those of you who might be new. Here's NVIDIA on the KISS systems. So NVIDIA, it went long, the KISS system went long on, and this isn't the high performance version, this is just the standard daily. It went long on December 28th, right here where you see the vertical line. Current stop 777. You can see it's been just following a stop up all the way. It trades up 78%. And this is not a back tested system. This was live on the website. It occurred live on the website on that day. Just some others. Here's AMD. AMD, it went long way back here. As you can see, and it just continues powering up. And here's one that could be for the record books, ANF. So ANF, the KISS system went long way back on July 25th, right here. Look at it following those stops all the way up. It's up 256% this trade. 41 times it's raised its smart trailing stop. That's amazing. Again, guys, don't expect stuff like that very often. 
I think I did see one that was 50 one time, but you know, a lot of the average are eight, 10, 15, stuff like that. But that's just amazing. But it's a great example of where the KISS system will just stay an entire trend. Whereas if you bought this, let's say you bought it back here on your own, not by the system, maybe it goes to here and you're like, oh, it's overbought and I'm gonna sell and take profits, I'm up nicely. And then, you know, then you miss this whole move. The KISS system just stayed in it and that's the beauty of it. Okay, let's get back to the general market newsletter here. So item number seven shows the index sector table which transpired today this week. So you can see the major indexes bounced back a bit today, around a half percent to 0.75%. Still down for the week, obviously, with the NASDAQ down about one and a half percent, the S&P down 0.63%. And as far as the major market sectors, again, a lot bounced back today. Only three sectors were down. Retail was down the most. The other ones were down less than a percentage. So pretty broad-based rally back today. About 50-50 for the week or up or down. Currencies, U.S. dollar pulling back today, down about a half percent for the week. That's been helping the precious metals bounce further, along with those pullbacks and the 10-year treasury yield. Cryptocurrency, of course, rallied strongly back today. All these are up, Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever. And Bitcoin still at 5% for the week. Commodities, mostly to the upside here. The index up 0.8%, crude oil up one and a quarter percent, natural gas down, but it's still up 5% for the week, copper, agriculture, et cetera, all up. Now wheat, coffee were down, precious metals, again, nice gains there, gold up 0.8% today, up 3% for the week, GDX up 1.74% today, up 6.7%, so that continues to outperform and they've been outperforming since late last week. That's great. And um, if we do get a pullback soon in that area, I favor that being a buying opportunity. As far as the uh, bond market, the 10-year treasury yield has been pulling back this week. That's helped the precious metals as well. Next, image number eight shows the economic news calendar. So for Thursday, uh, March 7th, we have initial jobless claims. Uh, natural gas inventories, if any of you hold uh, UNG. And of course, remember, Friday is the big jobs report. All right, so we'll see how that looks. And let's go and jump, start with the index charts first here. So image number nine shows the weekly snapshot of the five major indexes, which is the Bollinger Bands and uh, some moving averages. So again, no changes in the bigger trend here. You can see on the Dow, a little pullback. It got near the nine-week EMA. The nine-week EMA is your support, essentially, on the weeklies. You know, very simplistic, but it's a good guide. You can see there on the Dow, the S&P, on the Qs. So that's your guide on a major support, shorter term. Next, image number 10. Here's the daily view of the same indexes. Again, you know, we started this mammoth uptrend, this four-month uptrend in late October. And it's just been one hell of a market rally. So no real changes here yet. Let's go ahead and move on to the individual indexes. So here's the weekly view of the S&P. Again, so far this week, down 0.6%. So no changes here yet. Big trend. Next, image number 12. Here's the daily KISS system for the S&P. Okay. So again, no changes. Smart trailing stop still remains at 49.50. System went long there on October 31st. It's caught this entire trend essentially, just a couple days off the lows and uh, got a nice protective stop there. So if we continue going up, we'll get more trailing stops up. If the market decides to have a bigger correction here finally, then maybe we'll hit the stop. Again, nice job on the system. Again, you're not always gonna have winning trades. Here's a little small losing trade that it did from late August to September, but risk was defined. Got out of its smart trailing stop there. Next, image number 13, here's the four time frames with these custom indicators, the ATRs, the cycle indicators. So first off, I wanna focus on the cycle indicators here, guys. So notice on the 130 minute and 78 minute, and this is what I've been pointing out, Price has really been ping-ponging well between these cycles. You see this perfectly? The, your support cycles are the cyan color, and the resistance cycles are the magenta. 
So you can see price bouncing off the support cycles, stopping at the resistance cycles, bounce off support cycles, stop at that resistance cycle. So that called that pop we had on Monday almost perfectly, right? Notice though we have a buy cycle today and we have a buy cycle on the 78 minute. This is important because price is following these cycles very well. The reason I point this out is because once price finally breaks through one of the cycles, so if it eventually falls and closes below the support cycle, that would be more of a bearish sign that some sort of trend has changed. Okay, I'll keep you posted on those. Next, moving back to the standard charts, here's the S&P daily we've been shown. There's a really tight rising wedge. Again, nice sell-off yesterday, little shot across the bow. But again, we still, you know, we didn't break the uptrend line. We didn't go below the 20-day moving average. You have very strong upsloping moving at averages here. So no changes here. Again, on the things you got to monitor, we have pretty obvious divergences on the MACD, on the RSI. Those are never sell signals on their own. If you, they were sell signals, you would have sold this trend, you know, a month ago, right? So, but we are getting tight in the wedge here. You know, what I'm wondering is, can we get another move up in the wedge or not? That's the key, but we haven't broken the wedge yet. And also to really confirm an uptrend uh, symmetry break, you need to pull back larger than about 130 points. Obviously we didn't have that yet, but definitely, you know, even if we do make a new high here, guys, what I don't see is the market S&P running away. I don't think it would go that far. So I think your upside is fairly limited, even if it does make another high. Next, Charber 15, here's that zoomed in daily that I showed on Monday, working on this five, fifth wave. Again, we could have put in the fifth wave here at that 4150 high, or if we make a new high, then that would be a fifth wave. Too early to tell yet, but something to monitor. Next, Charber 16, here's the two-hour view. Nice, clean channel. Again, haven't broken the channel. So those could be some guides. If we break the channel, that could be a trigger for you, perhaps. By the way, guys, if you're just viewing this on YouTube, the beauty of our newsletters, our web browser newsletters, is we provide you the live chart to these. So you can actually, instead of just seeing a static image here, you could you know, click on the chart and see what it looks like tomorrow or three days from now. That's the beauty of just being a subscriber because we, we share all of our live charts like this. Next, driver 17, here's a 60-minute chart, that channel I was showing from Monday. We had a little potential wave five there, as you can see, then the big sell-off yesterday. Again, whether that was the wave five ended or we could still make another high remains to be seen. One option as well is that the S&P did put a high in here, whereas the NASDAQ maybe still make another high. Again, we'll see. We haven't broken anything, but clearly we're on watch now for some things. Chart 18, here's a 30-minute chart. Remember on Monday I was showing this rising wedge? Well, that ended up being a good thing to show you because we broke down, sold off on Tuesday. You can see price bounce basically at this demand zone where you see all this area. That's what you call a demand zone. We bounced off it, but so far we got a lower high in place. And Charber 19 is a 15 minute chart. You can see that wedge and you can see the, re the bounce today. We almost filled that open gap. That was kind of a magnet and got pretty close to the 0.786 fib. We'll see what transpires tomorrow. Moving on to the NASDAQ, triple Qs. Again, black candle today. So still in the same channel. Like I said, no changes. Nice sell-off yesterday and a little bit on Monday. And we haven't broken any supports. We have divergences we're monitoring, stuff like that. And your symmetry, of course, is you need to pull back larger than about $17.60 to break symmetry. Nowhere close to doing that yet. Chapter 21, here's another daily chart just showing some potential counts. Again, I don't want to get you guys bogged down into wave counts because it can, it can get complex. There's always multiple variations. If you've followed Elliott Wave, you should know that. But kind of working on this, you know, you got a potential five here, a little ABC, or we could make another high in a five. Again, to me, even if you make another high, like I said, it's not like it's going to run away. So to me, Mark is definitely a lot riskier here. 
should be pretty obvious. I mean, we've had a hell of a move from the late October lows. Chart 22, here's that weekly chart showing that, you know, wave count that I've showed it since early last fall, no changes. So I'm still watching to confirm this wave five of three to complete. And maybe it's completed or maybe we need another high still. But once it completes, I'm looking for a, some sort of wave four correction. So I'm not looking for this to end the bull market, guys. All right. I'm looking for it to be some sort of wave four, which would be a buying opportunity. But that wave four, guys, could take multiple weeks to unfold. Okay. This is a weekly chart. Next, chart bird 23. Here's the KISS system for the Qs. Again, no changes. Smart trailing stop, still 421. KISS system has nailed it on the Qs, and this is just the daily. Next, chart bird 24. Here's the four time frames. So very similar to the S&P. You can see price just ping-ponging between these support and resistance cycles on the 130-minute, 78-minute. And... Um, I'll keep you posted whenever it finally breaks through one of these cycles because that will be significant. Chapter 25, here's the two hour view. Steve showed this last night. If this forms a lower high on the queues, you could have a little head and shoulder pattern, just something to be aware of. Again, still too early to say, but it is something to monitor. Chapter 26, here's a 60 minute chart. This could have completed an ABC move up. So again, so far we have a lower high in place. Chapter 27, here's a 30 minute chart. Notice with today's nice bounce, where did price stall? Right at the 61.8 fib. That was an area to take some profits. I was gone today at the funeral home, so I didn't catch that, but again, we'll see what transpires tomorrow. And also guys, like I said, because we're getting toward the ninth inning, at least on this rally. Got to keep an eye on some of these hedging instruments. SPXU, that's the triple inverse ETF for the S&P. Again, it's still in a steep downtrend channel, just like the S&P is in an uptrend channel. But it's something to watch here if you need a hedge for a bunch of longs or, you know, if you eventually want to take an aggressive short. But, you know, hasn't broken out of the channel yet. Chapter 29, here's the SQQ. That's the triple Q's inverse triple ETF. So same analysis applies. But again, it's time to start monitoring some hedges, like I said. Next, looking at some of these, some of the individual stocks. Here's NVIDIA. Again, NVIDIA is on fire. Like I said, I mean, that's where all the money is. I mean, up, up every day, seemingly. It is working on this fifth wave, but you know, right now NVIDIA is at 887. Quite honestly, not too far from that round number of a thousand. If this gets up into the 900s. I think it could blow off to, and hit a thousand. Remember the old saying, a stock when it gets to 90, 92 dollars, it almost always goes to 100. Well, the same thing there. If you get into the 900s, you're so damn close to that 1,000 area, it's likely to tag it. And again, I know that's ultra simplistic, but you know that's how the markets tend to work. You know, markets trade a lot on psychology, and that's you know a big psychological thing, and uh, tends to play out. Next, looking at some other names that are weakening. Here's Microsoft. Now, Microsoft is starting to look a little weaker here. It hasn't lost its support trend line and 50-day moving average. You can see how price has been cradling the 50-day here. If it breaks that, that'll be very noteworthy, obviously. And again, it could still recover here. It could still bounce. This is support. It could bounce right off of here and make another high. But it's an, this is something to watch. Now, what's been really weak is Apple. So here's Apple on a two-hour time frame. You can see this descending triangle. I put that put this out as a short I think late last week. It played out here. This was the the uh, demand target zone, and it's given this. Now the market's held up fairly well here so far, considering the sell off in Apple. Chapter thirty three. Here's the daily. Another view. Again, we're down into this demand zone. Not pr not a pretty chart. Charber 34, another daily view of Apple. And Charber 35, here's that monthly view of Apple. This one concerns me longer term. Again, Apple is just, as you know, it's just been a crazy move. You know, kudos to the buying holders from way back then. But what we have here on the larger time frame is a potential big old monthly MACD divergence. That could set up a bigger top. 
you know, Warren Buffett, that's his largest position. So he's pretty overexposed, but he also has a lot of cash too. So something to consider. And Charter 36, Google. Google's also been weakening strongly. Look at this, well below its 200-day moving average. So these are some things to monitor. Right now, it's been holding up the market again with the semiconductors and NVIDIA. Next, Charter 37, IWM small caps. Here we adjusted this, kind of like more of a wedge-like pattern. Again, areas, the small caps are still holding up. Charter 38, here's the two-hour view. Still in the same pattern that I showed the other day. We could have a little fifth wave here or it could be a three. Um, I would monitor these trend lines for now. Pretty choppy. And here's that 39 minute chart that I showed on Monday. Remember we broke that little channel. We're still in the larger channel. And that does it for the major indexes, guys. So let's go ahead and move on. We'll look at a couple of indicators. Here's the VIX. And VIX has been up the last couple of days and it was up today. That's noteworthy that the VIX was up 0.3% despite the fact the S&P was up 25 points. I think it was up, yeah, 25 points. Um, these were buy signals. The VIX had five buy signals in a row from the Bollinger Band system. That obviously played out nicely. Next, chart 41, here's the 60-minute view of the VIX. So on the weekend, we showed this falling wedge into a support demand zone. That was a good thing that we showed is the price rallied strongly out of it. Now there's an open gap up here, which the VIX is getting into. But we gave you a heads up that the market may pull back from the weekend from this VIX chart. Next, chart number 42, here's the chart we've been showing, the S&P versus the SVXY. That's the inverse VIX ETF. Obviously, the two move together. But um, notice here, definitely something to keep an eye on and watch. Next, chart 43, here's the S&P 500 um, advanced decline versus the small cap advanced decline. You have this big divergence here. Again, that's why divergence is never a sell signal, but you do have this divergence forming as something to monitor. Chart 44, here's an interesting, actually this chart updated. Let's go and move on. I'm not gonna worry about this chart. And here's another chart to monitor. This is the NYSI 9 EMA crossover system. Okay. Again, it went on a buy signal way back here, the beginning of November. It crossed below its 9 EMA here, but it did not confirm a sell signal because it didn't take out the candle low. So it's still been in the uptrend. But notice how the not NYSI crossed back over the 9 EMA here in February. That's important because probably the next time it crosses down below the 9 EMA, I think that's going to be a good sell short signal. So that's something to monitor. Again, this is an excellent chart. If you're a subscriber, we provide you the live chart URL to this. Moving on, um, bond market. Here's the 10-year Treasury yield. Again, remember I showed this ABC pattern a couple weeks ago? A few weeks ago, I was guessing that this is what it would unfold. And so far, that's what's been happening. And this pullback has also helped the precious metals market. Chart 47, here's the high yield corporate market. Now it continues to push up a little bit here. Finally breaking out of the coil. It's not like running out of the coil, just kind of meandering out of it. But, you know, it's likely to form a big MACD divergence here eventually. Next. Moving on to some of the sectors. Here's the semiconductors. Again, look how strong this area has been. Again, that's... Lately, that has been one area of the market that's really holding up. Now, NVIDIA is a big component of this. Trevor 49, here's XLK. Again, got a spinning top doji and a confirmed evening star with yesterday's sell-off. But still holding that 20-day moving average for now. Trevor 50, here's XLF Financials. This area has been super strong. Got a little tight wedge forming here, but again, it's still uptrending for now. Chapter 51, transports still holding up. Now, this came well off the highs today, but you know this cup and handle pattern that we showed back in January has been playing out. Some other sectors, again, some of these are still holding up extremely well. Here's industrials, you know, off the highs today, but clearly in a very strong uptrend. Chapter 53, materials, same thing. Yet another high today. This has had one hell of a move. 
Driver 54, utilities with a pullback in rates. Utilities have been bouncing back. You can see it took out the channel on Monday and it's been moving up. Driver 55, XLE Energy continues pushing up. It has a little wedge pattern here, but you know, this could also be negated if it continues up. Driver 56, oil services. Remember, it broke its channel about two weeks ago. Prices have been moving up slightly since. I don't it hasn't broken symmetry yet, though. Moving to commodities, DBC up about 0.8% today. Again, otherwise it's still in this kind of choppy pattern. Driver 58, crude oil bounced off this uptrend line and those moving averages today. Driver 59, natural gas, little pullback. Again, nice bounce from that very oversold condition. But um, remember, natural gas inventories on Thursday, so that could be that could affect this. Here's that weekly time frame. Remember, natural gas essentially bounced off that 28-year low. So it's up three weeks in a row at the moment. Driver 61, copper, just showing the weekly here. This is probably the best way to look at it. You have a big year and a half long coil that is forming still inside the pattern. Driver 62, DBA, still holding its uptrend for now. Okay. Remember, we like the weekly chart. So here's the weekly chart, this big old cup and handle potential. Moving on to cryptocurrencies, here's Bitcoin. You can see it, you know, been very volatile here. Big rally on Monday, huge sell-off yesterday, and then a nice rally today. Kind of a little stick sandwich at the moment. Had one hell of a move here, obviously. Getting a little volatile at the moment. Here's the uh, weekly view that we've been showing. Driver 66, Ethereum, getting up, up, and away. There is all that speculation that they really are going to ease off the rules when it comes to capital controls okay. for some of the banks. You want CNBC was playing in the background. So Ethereum has really been coming on strong, I think, playing catch up to Bitcoin. Here's the Ethereum ETF. We put it out as a long back here at 20 bucks. I mean, look at that move. This is also on the KISS system. Driver 68, MSTR, again, this has also been on the watch list as a long here. KISS system's still long. You can see huge sell-off yesterday, nice recovery today. Driver 69, Coinbase, now basically, after yesterday's sell-off, making another high. Moving on, Driver 70, US dollar, nice weakening over the last couple weeks, starting to break this trend line a little bit. I'd like to see it now break its 50-day moving average. Driver 71, gold, yet another update at 2160. This is the, the new all-time high for gold, okay? Remember, it broke out of its uh, coil last week. But remember, we had confirming buy signals on the GDX-GLD ratio trend line break and the RSI break. Hopefully, you guys caught those. They are. It is getting quite extended here, guys. Now, you have to make a decision if you want to take profits and try to buy it back on a pullback or lock in some games, try to buy it, or, or you don't worry about it. It's, that's what makes trading not, you know, not ABC. There's always different things that you can do depending on your style and risk tolerance. Driver 72, there's the weekly chart. Driver 73, another weekly chart. We're essentially tagging this coil, this uh, trend line here. We could obviously blow right through it. One thing I want to see on the weekly, I do want to see the ratio eventually take out this trend line. And chart 74, here's that monthly chart. This would be the super bullish count that we're now starting this major wave three that will likely take gold well into the upper 2000s, 3000 eventually maybe. I still think gold will have its day, guys. You know, I know a lot of the crypto nuts think that gold is dead but i still think it's going to have it today one and maybe it started driver 75 silver nice update today again it's still in the bigger pattern here driver 76 here's that monthly view i love the monthly coil on silver obviously remember this is going to take time for this to play out it's a monthly chart moving on to the stocks bpgdm this is the bpgdm system Remember, this went long last week. I love this chart. It's so clean. Look at these nice buy and sell signals. Again, they're not all perfect. You can see a little whipsaw here. Um, but man, it's been good. It's really been, really been good for 
well over a year. Awesome sell signals, buy signal, sell signal, buy signal. Driver 78, here's GDX. Remember, broke this coil on our channel on Friday. Could have bought it right here. Got a nice move. You had confirming buy signals on the trend line breaks here on the ratio and on the RSI. Again, little spinning top doji. There is a little supply zone up here. It's getting quite extended. Um, let me look at, pull this up here. So again, guys, just be aware that any time we could see a pullback. Now, if that pullback unfolds in an ABC like this, I think it's a hell of a buying opportunity. Okay, It is getting quite extended. You have to decide if you want to take some profits here, lighten your, you know, lighten your position, or um, you, don't, you don't care and you're just going to ride it. It's, it's up to you. Driver 2079, here's the two-hour view. Again, remember we had that bullish break in symmetry. We actually blew through this one supply zone a little bit. But again, it is getting quite extended here. Let me show you the 60-minute chart. Here's the 60-minute chart. Little MACD divergence here. Look how wide the moving average ribbon is. Again, when it's pinched like it was here, that's when you get your big strong moves like you had here. When it gets too wide here, it's due for some mean reversion action to work that off. Look at some of the other ETFs. Here's GDXJ. You know, this is at a nice move as well. Again, all these have moved. You just have to decide if you're, which ones of these you're playing. Jarbert 82, SILJ, that's the Silver Junior Miners. Also a nice rally off this area. The individual stocks that I put out over a week ago, AU, awesome move from that coil. It's up in my Second target, which is the supply zone, and this still looks pretty good. It's above its upper Bollinger Bands here for three days, so be aware of that. Charbert 84, this Dundee Precious Metals. Remember, I liked this over a week ago down in here. Had a heck of a move. Congrats if you caught that. Charbert 85, here's the weekly. What I liked about it is the ABC on the weekly and how well it's held up over the last four years versus other precious metal stocks. Jarber 86, EXK, that's that low price silver stock I showed over a week ago. You br broke this on Friday. It's been a nice trending move on expanding volume. You also confirmed on the ratio trend line break. Jarber 87, RGLD, nice move. Again, a couple black candles here. You notice you got a lot of supply zone up here. A couple moving averages, 50. 200-day moving averages are down sloping. I wouldn't chase this here. I'd rather buy this on a pullback if you're not in it. Jarber 88 FSM. Silver stock. Jarber 89 BBN. This one is trying to pop a little bit out of the pattern as well. All right, guys, moving on to other setups here. Just doing a follow-up on some of these. Here's Sienna. It's a semiconductor, I think. We had it as a long idea last Thursday. Awesome move if you caught it. Congrats if you did. Charber 91, Advanced Auto Parts. This was a long idea of mine two weeks ago. Nice move. Down a little bit today, but it's a nice move. Nice longer-term chart here. Potential big inverse head and shoulder pattern. Charber 92, Dollar General. Remember, I was targeting this supply zone. We were right into that. Um, just trail the stops up. It's been an excellent trade from that coil and that higher low. Driver 93, TSBX, another nice one. It's pulling back here. I think this could be a buy down in here soon. Hope you took a profits though on that first move. Driver 94, True. This was a nice trade from an ascending triangle pattern about a month ago. Simply trail your stops up. If you're long, put it right there. Now, looks like it's trying to break out again. Driver 95, ES, Energy Source. Still struggling here. I still own this, but. Hasn't, you know, I'd like to see this get going soon. Here's a couple new setups, guys. Uh, TERN, the pharmaceutical, nice volume today, kind of a flag pattern. First target would be that $10 range. Jarbert 97, next. Interesting pattern here, if it can take out that resistance. And finally, Jarbert 98, MBLY. Nice volume today. Little trend line resistance here, something to monitor. All right, guys, that'll do it. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Again, thank you for all your condolences and well wishes, text messages.
And um, again, we'll see what happens here. Have a great evening. Take care.